Hey YouTube, in this video, I'm going to be talking about what things should you be carrying with you in your sprint bag. And it's probably going to be one of the shortest videos I've ever made, um, but it's probably the most one of the most important ones because carrying the right things in your bag can be beneficial or detrimental to you, towards you. And this isn't just um, when you're training though most of this is training, but it's also for when you're competing as well, because you want to make sure that whilst you're training, you bring the same, you bring the same things you would in, in competition to training so that you don't have the problem of going to your competition and you're like, oh no, I left this. And there was something that you did relating to a ritual you have that you left because you tend to try and bring different things to different things for training and different things for competition. So we just bunch them all up together and have everything ready then we know what we're going to have. There's only one thing I would say you wouldn't have when you're competing. Yeah, would you'd have when you're competing but you wouldn't have when you're training maybe and that would be the your kit for when you're competing unless you have enough space you should actually have enough space for it because so there's not much need for it when you're training. As long as you remember to bring it when you're competing, everything could be fine. So let's just start off with that. Number one, um, your kits that you wear when you go competitions. The size of your bag should be duffel because as we go through, you're gonna realize we're gonna be having a lot of things in our bags if we're doing things right. So a massive duffel bag would be a great place to start and make sure your kit's in there. So it's easy if you put it in there anyway because you don't have to forget about it. And unless you have to wash it, you're not gonna have to wear it any other time unless you're deciding to wear it to go look at yourself in the mirror or something, I don't know. But other than that, yeah, that's that's that. Two would be your sprint spikes, obviously. You're going to sprint, so you need to wear your spikes. Uh, other than that, also for your spikes, you can run into a lot of problems with your spikes. So it's essential, it's essential that number two would be, or three, I guess, make sure that you have actual spikes to put into the shoe uh, as well as a tightener. So I would say if you're really going to go all out, make sure you have two types of spikes. Um, the normal spikes that your comes with your shoe, spares for that, I mean, spares for that. So that's just the first type. Then the second type would be indoor spikes. I'm pretty sure they're called Christmas tree spikes. Because if you're going to go to an indoor meet, you're going to have to switch spikes. So I went to my first indoor meet um, this year. I went up happening was I had to buy spikes because... I didn't have the right spikes. They, they really would not let me go onto the track and compete if I didn't have the right spikes. So I had to pay something like eight pounds, maybe even more, for when I could just got them from Amazon for like four pounds because I didn't have the spikes. So make sure you, you have your spikes. It will save you a lot of time, stress, and money. Other than that, a massage gun. Massage gun, I believe, is very important. It is important for when you're warming up. It's important for when you're cooling down. If you can get a massage gun, invest in one. I think massage guns are very powerful. Or if you're not going to get one, get a foam roller, which you should always be packing. If you have a massage gun, I'd still recommend you still pack a foam roller. And if you don't have a foam roller, um, but you have a massage gun, buy one. But make sure it's a small one, because if you have a massage gun, there's not much need for a massive um, foam roller. You can still have a massive foam roller if you want, but a more moderate sized, tiny one, about maybe this big, would do you better. Other than that, um, you have two options here. You can either have a camera or you can have a phone. You really want to go out you can i guess you can have both which would mean just get up, just have a camera because most likely you're gonna bring your phone anyway because if you're gonna go record yourself whilst you're um training or competing you need to see what you're doing and you can't especially not when you're training you can't rely on someone else in the crowd recording for you and then they upload it on youtube then you find it and it's all, it's all damn you. you can't do that so make sure you always have that packed so you don't have to worry oh and that stopwatches make sure you have a stopwatch it's very important because especially if you're going to be doing time trials, you need to have a stopwatch to see how fast you're going. Because if no, if all other people like coaches, they're busy, you're going to have to go to the other athletes to, to get them to time you. So if, you're co if you can't go to your coach, you're going to have to go to the other athletes. And most likely, if you don't have a stopwatch, they won't have a stopwatch. So make sure you have one so you can save yourself time. Other than that, spare sprint spikes. Very important. Some people have um, sprint, like, many spikes like they have ones that they compete in they have ones that they only use for off season various other stuff for me i would say you always have spare sprint spikes because they didn't have to be good because you never know when you're going to need to get new sprint spikes um i know a guy who ordered sprint spikes mid-season you expected them one day they came a week later and they were the wrong spikes so he had to compete um 
with the wrong spikes as as when when you could have just competed with his old spikes wouldn't it probably wouldn't have done as well if you got some new spikes but competed with his old spikes and done as well what's really nice about this is if you compete in track and field for longer than a year your old spikes automatically can just become your spare spikes so that gets to save you time you don't have to worry about financing a crazy amount of money on extra spikes plus even if you did it's at most about 40 pounds for like the really cheap spikes you don't have to worry next would be resistance bands resistance bands are very important the amount of things you can get away with resistance well, I mean, not really get away with but use resistance bands for is exceptional if i had to bring one thing like if i couldn't go gym and i was only allowed one thing to to exercise with i would pick resistance bands every single time because you can do upper body you can do lower body and you can work on the muscles you can't see which is the real benefits like hip flexors to towards actually sprinting so make sure you have hip flex um you have resistance bands because your coach can help you i mean maybe you, if your coach is good they probably have resistance bands anyway but your coach can give you exercises with resistance bands you can practice them whilst you're there you can practice them when you're home which is good because you basically got 24 hours every day essentially other than when you're sleeping where you can be training using whatever your coach might have given you towards getting better next is a really obvious one Pack a water bottle. I don't have to really explain why you need a water bottle, as well as electrolytes if you can. Make sure those are there because those two, both of those things will affect how or will affect the quality of your the quality of your training sessions and your competitions. So if if you don't pack electrolytes whilst you're training, make sure you pack electrolytes whilst you're competing. Or at the very least, you've topped off well enough on electrolytes to not have to worry. Though just just. I'd say just go over the top and just have electrolytes in your bags. So this means you have to like, um, what's the word? Buy buy in bulk a bunch of electrolytes and have them in cold storage or some some something, and you just put in one pack every day. Yeah, you have to go train. Do that because you're just gonna it's gonna save you time. You won't have to, especially when it gets into summer like now. You won't have to worry about collapsing on the track or just dying and trying to find water or something to just quench this thirst you have. But you don't have anything so that's for walls and electrolytes other than that running shoes if you didn't wear running shoes going to track then make sure they're packed in your bag because most likely the shoes you're bringing i've seen people um train warm up and train in jordans and i won't lie i've done it before um i wasn't supposed to be training but i did it any, i just came anyway and i trained a bit i know that i know it's like but how would you do that to yourself make sure you buy running shoes or at least shoes that have really, really low um, bottoms. Because like shoes like to give you these high bottoms. The higher the bottom is, the harder it is for you to actually sprint. I can't, I can't really just, I don't, well, the, I think it's called the soles. The soles of the shoe. Make sure that you're really low to the ground. The lower to the ground you are, the better. Because the higher up you are, it just makes it impossible to, to warm up properly. So just make sure you have running shoes. Pound them in your bag or wear them, it doesn't matter. Um, other than that, make sure you have spare socks. But this is only if you're competing, um, general, competing or training, and you, you wear socks with your spikes. If you don't wear socks with your spikes, then there's no reason to pack socks. Maybe you want to pack socks. I don't know. I can't stop you. But generally, unless you're going to be doing that, there's no need for socks. And then the final thing um, would be something comfortable to wear once you finish training. Like I like Crocs, so I usually go to to track in Crocs now. So I just wear Crocs and when I'm done with my training, I put, I put my Crocs on, they massage my feet a bit as I'm walking and I'm, I'm happy and it helps me relax. This one is probably the most optional one out of all of the ones I just listed. I don't think any of the ones I just listed before were optional, but this one is more optional. You don't have to wear Crocs or any form of comfortable um, footwear like slippers or sliders if you don't want to. but. I've joined the crew that do that, that does that and I won't lie, I can't go back to just training and then wearing normal shoes. It's just not the same. Because the the feeling of comfort you get when you've done that after a training session, you've done that after a competition, is bliss. So make sure maybe other than that, because that's that's purely optional. Make sure all the other stuff I just listed you have in your bag, which means you're gonna need a big bag. It's gonna this is why you're gonna have to get a duffel bag. Because if you don't get a duffel bag, all of this stuff won't fit. Don't worry if you can't get all of this stuff um, at first. Just make sure you work, actually work towards getting all of this stuff in your bag. Because once you do, you're going to be able to see the benefits. Maybe not straight away, but the benefits will compound and show themselves throughout the season when you do have all of this stuff. Because it will make sure that whilst you're training and you're competing, life is 
Just so much easier. You don't have to, don't have to stress about these other problems. Because all the problems you might have had, you've already packed them in your bag. So there's no need to worry. And as long as you have those, you will have a very happy season from then onwards. As long as you make sure they're always in your bag. If you like my content, don't forget to, to like and share it around. Comment any questions you might have, I'll always respond. Um, I post at 1pm Greenwich Mean Time every two days. So if you don't know what time that is, then just make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell and you'll be notified every single time I post, you don't have to keep checking. Other than that, I also have a Patreon where I upload a blog post related to sprint training, gym training and plan metrics. And I also, um, if you send them in, I can do sprint me mechanic analysis for you and give them back to you as well as doing one-on-one -on -one coaching towards sprint technique and helping to develop you in the gym and plan metrics. I hope to see you in my next video.